I am Heidi Benjaminson, your host of Confidence Coaching, a podcast for mothers who want to be the best example possible for their teens. Life isn't a spectator sport. Success comes to those who show up every day with a pocket full of courage, grit, and a little sparkle. I'm glad you're here. Hello, hello. Welcome to episode 148, Being Emotionally Independent. Welcome to my podcast, friends, family, new listeners, and my very loyal listeners. I'm grateful for all of you. Make sure that you push the subscribe button. And I always appreciate my ratings and reviews. I love getting direct messages, DMs, or texts when you really like an episode, if it really resonates with you. And I'm always open to a topic that you want to hear about. I have a few queued up in the next month or two that have come from requests from listeners. As I was preparing this week's episode and topic, I realized the irony that we're all collectively living. We all secretly want to control our kids, to keep them out of danger, to keep them safe, to help them learn and make good choices. We set up home and life structures in a sense of control. And I'm not meaning a bad or evil controlling. Most of us, though, wish we had more control than we really do. And our work is realizing and accepting the very little control we do have over our kids, over the world. Now, here's the ironic part. In this quest to raise kids who become productive humans, who have values and can give back to society, in this quest... It can become easy to think that who they are, what they do and don't do, is what is controlling us. So if we do that, we, in a sense, seek to control what we can't, and we inadvertently, we do lose control over the very things that are our responsibility to control. So let's dive in. Today, I want to discuss what it means to be emotionally independent which is the most basic and the most important component to creating confidence. Our goal is to always realize we are responsible for what we are experiencing, even when we don't like the feeling, even when we hate the other person, even when we feel immense joy and happiness, even when we're jealous or insecure, all of it. Emotional independence is not being dependent on another person to do or say or be a certain way for us to feel something. Now, if you're human like me, we're going to forget this. Even if we've heard it a million times or studied emotions and the brain for years as I have, our knee-jerk default reaction is going to be to blame or give responsibility to the people around us for what we are feeling, experiencing. But we never, ever want to give away this incredibly important responsibility. Our confidence skyrockets. Who we become, how others treat us, all of it goes to a higher level when we look inward and take responsibility for everything we are experiencing. Our confidence takes off when we stop trying to control what we can't, and we focus intently on controlling exactly what we can what is in our lane of responsibility to control. Just two days ago, I said goodbye to my two sons who were home for spring break. We had a really, really fun week with them. I took them to Charleston for two days. We did so many fun things with them. They got settled in our new house. The weather was super spectacular. Y'all, isn't it so fun to have kids grow up and to do adult fun things with them? We did get some doctors and banking and other big things done. Then they left. My heart twisted as they drove off with my husband to take them to the airport. My sons are not making me feel anything. That entire experience was because I am thinking I miss them. I'm thinking and wondering if everything will be okay on their drive back to campus. I'm longing for the fun with them. I am creating the feeling inside me, and I want to take responsibility for that. We do not, y'all, we do not want our teenagers to be in charge of what we feel. Do they influence our emotions? Of course. 
We're humans. We're going to react in certain ways. When we get the text asking us to bring the permission slip to school that we know we reminded them about, we're going to be frustrated. The child isn't creating the frustration. We are. We're frustrated because we're thinking they should have listened to us. How many times do we have to remind them? Will they ever listen? Taking responsibility and saying internally, I'm frustrated because I'm thinking they should have listened. It gets us anchored to take responsibility for how we respond, how we react. We can be frustrated and not take the permission slip to school. We can be frustrated and send a calm text response. We can be frustrated and express that we understand it must stink that the slip will be a day late. We can also be frustrated and decide we want to take the permission slip to the school because we saw how distracted they were in the morning as they were helping their little sister. Owning the frustration and stopping to ask, how do I want to respond? All of this creates emotional independence. When we accept responsibility for the frustration, we're able to respond without blame or attacking the other child. We have greater access to compassion, understanding, and validating how they feel. We then do not act like the victim, rushing to the school with a scowl, angrily throwing the slip at the front desk staff. Accepting responsibility anchors us to be the higher version of ourselves, even if it means sitting in the frustration for several moments. I've often quipped that there are two types of people in the world, those who like having problems and those who solve problems. If we want to be problem solvers with more space for healthy relationships and happiness, we want to be emotionally independent. We can be offended if we want. We just need to own there's something that we agree with that was said, and we need to create the protection inside us. We can be overwhelmed. We can be irritated. We can be scared. We just want to always own that these experiences are being created by the thoughts, emotions, neurons, chemicals, life experiences, our own personal lens, not by other people. All of the emotions are valid. There's never anything wrong with our emotions. We can be overwhelmed with our life, and maybe our best friend would not be overwhelmed in the same situation. We can be peaceful when our spouse is irate. Emotions aren't wrong or something to fix. They're giving us information, and we want to pay attention to them, not judge ourselves for them or think they mean something's wrong with us. Emotional independence does not mean that we always feel good. It simply means we take responsibility for how we feel, for how we act, and then how we react. One simple thing I do to anchor myself and to be more polite and a more gracious person, especially when others are not, is to repeat very loudly in my mind, I am responsible for how I react. I am responsible for how I react. My reaction is a reflection of me, not them. My reaction is a reflection of me, not them, over and over until I feel settled inside. We've been in our house a month and already a solar salesperson has come to our door. I didn't answer the door, my husband did, but it reminded me of our last house and what seemed like constant salespeople coming to the door. The way our door was situated in that home with windows was such that anyone at the door could see me coming. I have no problem not answering the door if I do not want to be interrupted. I always try to own that I'm allowing myself to be interrupted and answer the bell or the phone. But sometimes I could feel the irritation rising in my body like a hot thermometer, mad that they were there. I then forced some fairly pleasant look on my face as I paused and listened. In the minute that that person was telling me what they were at the door for, I would repeat over and over to myself, I am responsible for how I react to them. If I'm rude, it's a reflection of me. If I'm kind, it's a reflection of me. I am responsible to be direct, clear, and kind to them. Notice how all of those internal statements began with I. I anchored myself that I was in charge that 
I was creating the experience and I wanted to like how I responded. Those statements didn't have me mad that these people were at my door. It wasn't their fault I had opened the door. That was on me. They were in their lane selling their products. I was and continue to be kind and considerate because I'm not blaming them for my emotions and my reactions. If we blame other people for how we're feeling or think they control us, we're always going to show up as insecure, graspy, over-accommodating, manipulative people. Emotional dependence is unattractive. It's a vibe that others track and can sense. Years ago, I was developing a friendship with another woman, and I could tell, uh, I am going to disappoint her. I could sense I'm not available as much as she wants, and I don't want to do the same things that she does. And I could tell from her reactions to other situations that she'd be unhappy with me. So I kept the relationship superficial. Emotionally healthy people are not interested in deep relationships with people emotionally dependent on others, which means If we stay dependent on others, we will attract people who like to manipulate, who sense our insecurities, and they'll exploit these qualities. People with bad intentions can track this in others. They can sniff it out. Y'all, very few people try to take advantage of me. I put out a vibe that I am confident in how I'm feeling, and I'm in charge of my emotions. I'm in charge of how I show up and act in the world. This begins by being in control and owning everything I feel. I can clearly and directly communicate what I'm feeling, what I need. I can be gracious and compassionate more so than I used to be before understanding these mental and emotional tools. All of this stems from looking inward to notice what I'm experiencing and taking responsibility for it. Now, because I'm human, I slip up and I react in ways I don't like. I'll often apologize to my family. It seems like they get the worst of these reactions. But the apologies end up connecting me more to these people, and it gives them permission to do the same and own their humanness as well. Emotional independence means we look inward for validation and acceptance instead of looking to others. Go ahead and ask friends if an outfit looks good, if the paint colors match. But we have to get good at looking inward to see if we're good people, if I'm a good mother, if I belong, if I'm okay, if I have worth and value. Internal needs must be filled by our own internal mental narrative about how we think and feel about ourselves. External solutions will never fill internal problems. This is why money never brings sustained happiness. Nice clothes don't create sustained confidence. The invitation to the party doesn't make you feel like enough. Social media is the greatest example of how the more likes we seek from others, it's now shown to feed deep insecurity. Because being enough, our sense of who we are has to come from the inside. Go get a new outfit, of course, but realize outfits cannot hide the insecure vibe that comes when we don't like ourselves. Here's the thing. If we seek validation from others, We are constantly trying to change who we are for approval and what another person thinks about us. Remember, what they think about us tells us what their lens of the world is, and it tells us very little about ourselves. I've been trying to buy a lot of things for my new home. I definitely seek advice from others, look for suggestions online, seek guidance, and I've gotten very good at asking myself, above all, do I like it? Do I like this color on the pillow? Even in areas where I feel I have such little expertise, I make myself make the ultimate decisions based on my own inner peace and desire for whatever it is. This emotional independence builds up my own sense of worth and value. I learn to trust myself more. Our first house had a cute mud room off the back and I bought these fancy hooks for the walls that I loved. I bought them at a small market well over 20, maybe 25 years ago. I loved them, and every time I walked into the mudroom, hanging the kids' coats or whatever I was doing, I repeated to myself, I love these hooks. Then one day, 
a contractor came into the back of the house and made an offhand comment about how the hooks didn't fit the look of the rest of the mudroom. And I remember thinking, well, he's wrong. He might not like it, but I sure do. It was so easy for me to dismiss his lack of validation, his dislike, because I can reinforce my own choice. I had been reinforcing it over and over again when I walked into the room. His vote had no weight over my vote. Coat hooks are pretty insignificant compared with how we think about ourselves, about how we think about the choices that we make, the rules that we have for our kids. Are they right or wrong? Two days ago, my daughter was really mad at me for a decision I made. I knew that I was happy and okay with the decision, and I let her be angry. She has every right to be upset at anything if she wants. Emotional independence means we let other people feel exactly how they want to feel. We do want to be considerate, or there are times we want to explain why we do things. Then we release control of how the other person interprets our words. We want our children to have the space to feel what they are feeling. We want our spouse to have their space to be nervous, to be scared, to be elated, feel whatever they want, and know that we get to choose if we mirror that back to them or if we want to feel something else. Last week, I had several moments of happiness and peace and pride. I'm watching my sons make mature, courageous decisions I'm watching them navigate adult situations. They aren't perfect, but several times I was overcome with happiness and hope and immense love. My sons are influencing these emotions, but they are not creating and controlling them. They are not responsible for how I was feeling. In those situations, like in the negative or more uncomfortable emotions, I was creating them. I pondered these emotions and I owned that I was creating the good positive. By doing so, I learn how to create them. I don't give credit to others for the good. I see what's going on in my mind. I want this control because we have power to then create more of the good. And heavens knows we need more of the good in this world. And it starts inside us. That's it for this week. If you would like personalized weekly private one-on-one coaching to learn how to control your emotions and improve every single relationship in your life, sign up for a consult call at HeidiBenjaminson.com. A confident mother is the greatest gift to her family, not a perfect mother. Our families want us to feel confident, anchored, and calm. I can help you uncover this version of yourself. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.